Okay. Grace be with you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, are we to make images of the Godhead? So, I got to talking um, with David Daniels at uh, Chick Publications, and I just had this conviction on my heart about, you know, drawing images of Jesus Christ and God the Father and the Holy Spirit, you know. And then I already know having symbols like the Trichetra is a pagan symbol. It's 666 turned into a, like three leaves, uh, the Trichetra. And it just, I quoted a verse to him and he just, oh, I don't, I don't agree with you. I believe that if you, uh, you can make images as long as you don't worship them. But we're going to talk about that. So if you turn to Exodus 20, chapter 20, verse 3. And I want to keep reminding people, my brothers and sisters in Christ out there, to stand for the King James Bible. And for those who don't know, I'm a King James Bible believer. I believe it's God's perfect written word in English. So, Exodus 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And here's the one, uh, uh, verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, heaven above, or that is in earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Period. There's a period there. That's a command. That's it. That's the command. And people try to ignore that period and go on to the next verse and try to combine both verses. No, that is the command. The second command, verse 5, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. I mean, why is that two different commands? Because someone can easily say, I didn't create it. I didn't create it, so therefore I can bow down to it. If God just said, don't make no graven images, I can easily say, well, I have one, but I didn't make it, so that makes it okay. God was saying that you're not to make them, period. Then you're not to bow down yourself to them. Even if you didn't make them, you're still not to bow down yourself and worship them. Okay? No graven images. Notice it says, in heaven above, no images of God. Okay? And today, the, um, the Godhead is revealed to us more. Okay? So, this, I believe, still includes Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and God, the Father. Okay? But the biggest thing is the period. Four and five are two commands. They're related, but they're two commands. They're not one command altogether. Okay? They're two different commands, but they're related. So they're not different. I mean, just kind of trying to be confusing. But hopefully you get what I'm saying. There's a period there. I've had brothers and sisters of Christ tell me it's not that big of a deal when I made the video saying I went through my house and I threw out anything that had a picture of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is a dove, God the Father is this like just outline of a physical being that's hollow. I went and threw everything out. Okay. Plus I had some Bibles, I love collecting Bibles, that had the Catholic Jesus. And we'll talk about why it's so dangerous and why God doesn't want us doing it. Especially today. We'll get to that point. Okay, Levitic Leviticus chapter 26, 1. Always remember the period. Two commands. You're not to do it, like draw it, anything. People say graven is graven. When you draw a piece of paper, you're graving it into the paper. The paper's wood, okay? Um, it still counts, and we're going to find this in the New Testament that it means that also. Computers, it means that also. Movies, TV shows, cartoons, it means that also. And we'll get to that point in the New Testament. Okay, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 1. Ye shall make no idols or graven images, neither rear up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. What false religion, notice it said standing image, what false religion do we know of that they make statues of the Godhead and they even make statues of Mary, and people go and pray to it. They pray to a statue. The Catholic Church. How many false religions out there where they're making statues of animals and they're worshiping animals? Um, 
I, I threw away a plate uh, from Okinawa that had the two dogs on it. They're spirits that protect the home, and, and you've got to thank those spirits. So you're praying to them, thank those spirits, and make sure those spirits are protecting your home. Uh, you're not to do that, okay? Also, I put on here sometimes, can a statue of a man for a memorial be worshipped? Um, sometimes people go so far, I just want to say crazy, so far as to talk to memorial statues. Uh, whether it's a busk of a head, you know, someone they cared about or loved or something like that, and they start talking to them. Uh, you're not to do that. Is it wrong to do it a memorial statue? No. But can that become a false god? Can people start worshiping the statue of the man that you're trying to do a memorial of? Uh, it's possible. So I just wanted to throw that in there. So you always got to be careful. Be very, very careful. Uh, I came across a woman that her family was, uh, one of her family members was cremated and she wanted to go see the grave. And she wanted to get, I don't know why at first, but she wanted to stop and get some Reese's. And I took her to the grave and he, the man was uh, cremated and she's sprinkling, he loves Skittles and she's sprinkling Skittles all over the area and, and she's singing to him and, and talking to him. I'm like, this woman is it's crazy. But what is that? Okay. You're not supposed to do that. Okay? You have to talk to the dead. And you're especially not to let images of people become false gods by worshiping them. Deuteronomy 4.16 Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, any figure, the likeness of male or female, any figure. Okay. Number 17, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth. We've talked about a lot of religions, or uh, one of them, I can't remember if it's Thailand or Hinduism, where they, they worship uh, elephants. Dragons is, is in some uh, false religions. Okay, beast that's on the earth in the likeness of any winged fowl on the f that flies in the air. Let's well, up there for a second. What's the most notable image that people make of the Holy Spirit? A dove. The Bible says the Holy Spirit came down on Jesus like as a dove, like giving it an example of something. Okay. It wasn't a dove that flew down on Jesus Christ, okay? But people try to say it is, and they start making images that are false images. The Holy Spirit is not a dove. The likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. Okay? We're not to make any images of male or female and worship them images. We're to worship Jesus Christ, but we're not to make an image of what we think Jesus looks like. Okay. And we'll get to why that's so dangerous. Uh, Mary and the, I could say the Antichrist Jesus, but Mary and the Antichrist Jesus, once again, I'm not saying you should, but I have been in a Catholic uh, um, church, a big huge building, and on the left side, I think it's on the left side they'll have Jesus because he's not the right one to go to. Uh, the left side they'll have a huge statue of Jesus on the cross and candles below him. And on the right they had a statue of Mary and candles below her. And, you, and it's a place for you to go up and pray to him. Okay? You're not to do that. Uh, 17 Holy Spirit dove, we talked about that. The fish symbol. How many remember, and there are so many people and they just can't let go of their false gods. And they start doing the fish symbol with the cross for an eye and you look into it it's actually a pagan god Egyptian god it's a symbol for a pagan Egyptian god um, I used to I watched uh, Joseph King of Dreams um, the cartoon with my daughter and God convicted me because it showed the coat that the mom made Joseph the coat of many colors it had fishes on it and that shape and I'm like, there's Satanism and a lot of that stuff. So I always, I'm, I'm with some of the brothers and sisters out there. Stay away from any video cartoons or movies that they're trying to reenact the Bible. Okay? Just stick with the Bible. Okay. 
Deuteronomy 5 8, Thou shalt not make thee any graven images, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Once again, we show that it talks about everything that we just talked about. But one thing I left out last time was angels. Nothing in heaven above. You're not to make any graven images of God the Father, Jesus Christ, uh, the Son of God the Father, and the Holy Spirit of God the Father. You're not to make it of angels. Okay? You're not supposed to make symbols or try to do an image that includes all three as one. Okay? We're not supposed to have any visual images. Deuteronomy 25... 15, 27, I'm sorry. Deuteronomy 27, 15. And I'll stop for a second. When we get a little bit ahead, I'm going to ahead of myself. The Antichrist. When the Antichrist comes, he's going to look like these fake Jesuses that have been put out there. Even if you cut the hair short or it's long, you're still making Jesus out to look handsome and like a movie star. And, you know, uh, movie star, uh, model, whatever you want to say. The reason God doesn't want us making any images, period, is because He knows what's going to be happening in these last days. How we have these false images of Jesus Christ, and when the Antichrist comes, He's going to look like those, uh, like those images. Okay? It's dangerous to have images of Jesus Christ. That's why we're not, al we're not allowed to, we're not supposed to as Christians. We're commanded not to as Christians. Okay? Deuteronomy 27.15 Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molted image, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and putting in the secret place, and all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Okay, warning. It's a big danger for people to even, that are doing this, and that's why I was warning David Daniels. It's a bad thing to do it. Okay? Notice it says, Cursed be the man. Okay? It's brought to David Daniels. He knows better now. It's between him and God at this point. So, we're warned we're not even supposed to make them. We're not to do any drawings. Nothing like that. Okay? If you find in your home that you have stuff like that, I, am, I implore you and I encourage you to get rid of it. You want God's peace on your home, God's blessing on your home. You don't want God's chastening on your home. God's protection. You want God's protection in your home. And if you've got sinful, wicked stuff in your home and you know about it, God's not going to have His protection on that home. Because Satan comes to Him. Remember, He's the, accusing the brethren day and night. He's up there saying, see, they got all these wicked things in their house. you got to do something about it. Or you got to take your protection off and let me do something about it. <laughs> and you don't want that. Okay, Psalms 97.7. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols, worship him, all ye gods. I know there's a little bit more to it before and after, but the point I wanted to get to is confounded. These people that don't want to let go of the Trinity, their pagan Trinity, uh, God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Ghost, uh, people that want to just stand for doing images like uh, Chick Publications. What does confounded mean? Mixed or blended in disorder, perplexed, abased, dismayed, put to shame in silence, astonished. Definition number two, erroneous or a confounded Tory. Okay. In other words, they're going to be confused. It's going to be disorder. These people that stand for the Trinity, you start looking into them, they're making a mess of the Bible because they're worshiping a false god. Uh, these people that are for making images of the Godhead, you start noticing things about chip publications that aren't right. They're standing for the, the Trinity. Uh, you notice a lot of things about, you go through their comics uh, books, uh, their tracks, God, lowercase g, because I don't believe in the copy, uh, capital K, G, lowercase g, God, uh, God the Son. Okay, there's only one God, the Father. Uh, 1 Corinthians, I think, 8, verse 6, there's only one God, the Father. Okay. And one Lord Jesus Christ. So I had to do that for confounding. Uh, the reason I believe a lot of these people are confused and they're lost, a lot of them are lost, but when brothers and sisters in Christ fall into that trap, how they start getting confused. Okay. Isaiah 42 17. 
They shall be turned back, they shall be greatly ashamed, that trust in graven images that say to the molten image, Ye are gods. Now as we go through here, we're going to notice one big word that goes along. God's ashamed of you. Okay? You worship false god, gods that uh, I believe, because <coughs> it's talking to the Jewish people, that even today we're adopted in the body of Christ. When you find, when God finds out that you're worshiping false gods, he's ashamed of you. You're making false images of the Godhead and saying, that's my God. Um, God's ashamed of you. Uh, God's uh, Catholic Church is a mess. We already know that about the Catholic Church. Uh, false gods around the world, you know. God looks at all those people and he's ashamed of them. He's, he's ashamed of them and his wrath is upon them. Isaiah 44, 8. This is going to be a long one. We're going to go from 8 to 18. And the reason I want to go through this all the way is notice how many times the word ashamed is there. See, I believe God, now that David Daniels knows the truth, and anybody else out there that's been told the truth, that you're not to have images of the Godhead, that's what's leading to the Antichrist, that's leading to people accepting the Antichrist. It's dangerous. Once they know, God's ashamed of them. If they don't repent, forsake all that, all the drawings, throw them away, burn them like I did, God's going to be ashamed of you, even if it's your uh, brother and sister in Christ that you have stuff in your home that's images. I've had people tell me it's not a big deal, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. God makes it a big deal. Isaiah 44, 8. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from the time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witness. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God, I know not any that they make a graven image are all of them vanity. I, mean, I wish I had looked up the word vanity so you guys, but look up the word vanity in the uh, Webster's 1820 Dictionary. And their delectable things shall not profit, and they are their own witness. They see not, nor know, that they, be, that they may be ashamed. They're their own witness. Even if I'm not telling somebody, you should still have a bad feeling that God's telling you something's just not right with this. You're your own witness. You ignore those feelings. Uh, God's ashamed of you. It's your fault. You should not ignore your conscience or the Holy Spirit that pricks your heart. Verse 10, Who hath formed a God, lowercase g God, or molten or graven image that is profitable for nothing. Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed. And the workmen they are of men, let them all be gathered together, let them stand up, yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. Okay. And pointing the three up there, I lost my place. <laughs> Shame together. Verse 12. The smith with the tongs both worked in coals, and fashioneth it with hammers, and worked Worketh it with the strength of his arms, yea, he is hungry, and his strength faileth. He, he drinketh no water, and it faint. The carpenter stretcheth out his rule. He marketh it out with a line. He fitteth it with planes, and he make, maketh it out with the compass, and maketh it after the figure of a man. Get a hold of that one. According to the beauty of a man, get a hold of that one. What's this fake Jesus the Catholic Church does? He's all feminine with long hair. He's so beautiful. And then they always try to make Jesus out like they are supposed to be Bible-believing or Protestants. They make him out to be handsome, a beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. He dwelleth him down cedars. Let's see. He heweth, i sorry. He heweth him down cedars and take the cypress and the oak. What is paper made out of? So I'd throw that out there which he strengtheneth for himself among the trees of the forest, he planteth an ash, and the rain doth nourish it. Then shall it be for a man to burn, for he will take thereof and, thereof, and warm himself, yea, he kindleth it, and baketh bread, yea, he maketh a god, lowercase g, god, and worship it, he maketh a graven image, and falleth down thereto. He burneth part thereof in the fire, which part thereof he eateth flesh. 
I already said this once. Um, you got to be careful. Some places I would go to, like Japanese, mainly Japanese and Chinese restaurants, they've got the, the cat. They'll have a Buddha symbol, like, you know, pet the uh, Buddha's belly. And you go into those places, to me, just to err on the side of caution, it's like eating to false gods. You're eating food prepared by people who are worshiping false gods, especially if they have a statue of Buddha. Uh, there's a place I love to go to called Tin Tin in Medford, and I won't, I'm going to not go there anymore. It's been pricked on my heart, okay? But they always have these symbols of dragons and these false god symbols. If you walk into that building, that food, is, when you walk into a building like that, is prepared. You're eating it, not in, even if it's not intentional, you're still eating it to false gods. The food prepared for false gods and by false gods, people who worship false gods. He roasteth, roast, and sanctifieth. Yea, he warmeth himself and say, saith, Aha, I am warm, I have seen the fire. 17. And the residue thereof he maketh a god, even his graven image. He falleth down unto it, and worshipeth it, and prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my god. They have not known, nor understood, known, or understood, for he hath shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. Okay. You get to a point where you keep trying to justify it, justify it, justify it. And yes, it mentioned unworship, but it also mentioned other things that had nothing to do with worship. Just eating food offered to idols. Just making them, okay? But also worshiping them. We already talked about you're not to make them, you're not to worship them. Two commands that are linked, but they're two separate commands. They're separate, but they're talking about the same thing almost. You're not to make them, and you're not to worship them two separate commands. They're not, it didn't, didn't say, when we read it, it didn't say you're not to make them and you're not to worship them. No, there was a period. End of command. Next command. Okay? So, uh, right there, it says ashamed three times. And we'll see the word ashamed again and again, how God is ashamed of you and you need to be ashamed and repent and get that out of your life. Okay? Uh, the part here at the very end, verse 18, where it talks about uh, God will shut your eyes that they cannot see and their hearts that they cannot understand. I always keep bringing up the Trinity people, um, especially the lost that's given. If you keep ignoring your conscience and you, you're trying to seek God and you ignore your conscience and you start worshiping false images, uh, your eyes are going to be closed. Okay, You're not going to want to hear the truth. The Bible says that the gospel will be hid to them that are lost. That just does, they love their God and they don't want the true God. But the Trinity people are the big people. You notice a lot of the images that they use, and God, and they're just vehemently for it. They refuse to listen to what you have to say about Scripture, God's perfect written word. They ignore it. They want nothing to do with it. They claim they, claim they do, but when you quote Scripture, I'm saying, hey, the tr Trinity's pagan. You're you're taking Godhead, capital G Godhead, a title for God and replacing it with a Trinity, capital T Trinity, a title for a false God, a Catholic God. You think God's okay with that? But why won't these people listen? Right there, they have not known or understood, for He has shut their eyes that they cannot see in their hearts that they cannot understand. They've worshipped pagan symbols false gods, the image of Jesus, the image of God the Father, the image of the Holy Spirit as a dove, they've worshipped it for so long and they refuse to give that up that God has just closed up their eyes, you know, and their hearts they cannot understand. He closed their hearts so they can't understand. They refuse to listen to people at the point where they could understand and they just reject it, reject it, reject it, reject it. God, okay, I'm going to blind you. I won't let you, you're never going to see the truth. I'm going to blind you. I want to close up your heart. That's why I pray that this is addressed to the brothers and sisters in Christ and that you just get this stuff out of your life. It's just not good to have a period. Okay. Now, we get to the New Testament. Acts 17, 29. Okay, this is one thing I threw out there. and People keep saying graven image just means statue. Uh, graven means you make a mark in something. Okay, you're graving something into something. Now it can be stone, it can be wood, it can be all kinds of stuff. But what's paper made of? Okay, 
But God knew the future. God is his past, present, and future, okay? Who was and is and is to come, to say it the Bible way. Okay, he knew about the computers. He knew about TV. He knew about all this stuff. And we're going to read it right here. Acts 17, verse 29. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art. Look up the definition of art. It includes paintings and drawings. Graven by art and man's devices. Man's devices, like TVs, computers, movies, tablets, phones, anything that has a screen on it. Do you think God didn't know that was going to happen? Okay? We are not to do make images of the Godhead. We're not supposed to draw the image of Jesus Christ, okay? Because people are going to be looking for that person, and that's not what Jesus Christ looks like. We are not going to know what Jesus Christ looks like until he calls us home and we see him for the first time. And the reason we're not supposed to know, because God knew that Satan, his minions, and his, his servants of Satan, his followers, in other words to say, are going to start creating all these false images of Jesus. That's why Jesus said there are going to be many antichrists out there. Okay? But anytime you draw an image of Jesus, that's the antichrist. I don't care what you say, it's the antichrist. We do not know what Jesus is going to look like until we get to heaven. And we're not to know. We're just to have faith in him. Um, I see, I told you where paper comes from. Wood. Ink and paper on paper. What are you doing? You're engraving wood canvas. It's art. Sometimes art, it's, if you look under art, it's also the skill of clothes, making clothes. So making clothes where they, have, they do like the image of Jesus Christ with the crown of thorns, like the head with the crown of thorns. You don't have to do that either. Okay? It's not just paper, it's not just wood, carvings, statues, or TV, it's also clothes. You're not supposed to have any graven image on your clothes. Uh, so we talked about cartoons, movies, games. I threw in games. Uh, back when I was little, there was a game that I used to play that had to do with the whole armor of God. And I don't think it showed Jesus, but the thought came to my heart that they could easily start doing video games where, you know, they're going to show Jesus there and the Holy Spirit is a dove and, and who knows board games where they have images of Jesus on the cards and stuff like that. Uh, you don't want to do that. Okay, so. I've talked to here, and at this point, I hope and hope and pray that God has pricked your heart. Because like I said, I've had brothers tell me it's not a big deal. I had that attitude, and then God said, you need to look into it more. And I did, and you know what? My whole attitude goes back to the previous video I did about your heart being right with God, and your home being a godly home. I want God's protection, God's grace, God's peace, and God's love on my home. I don't want God's chastening on my home. I don't want God to go, okay, you're going to have that wickedness in your home and you're not going to give it up. I'm going to set back. Satan had at thee. Okay. Satan can't do nothing to us without God's permission. But that doesn't mean God won't give him the permission. Okay. I want to make sure my home's a godly home. So I pray that this has pricked your heart that you'll look into it, because there was tons of scripture on graven images, just tons. I just went over a little bit. Uh, you should feel ashamed. You should look at this stuff. Anytime you come across anything, not just the graven images, when you come across anything in your house and you realize, oh my gosh, how come I could, didn't see that before? You should always feel ashamed when you have something wicked and evil in your life and you get it out ASAP and you, t and you go before the Lord and say, Lord, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. I Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you for showing me that. Okay. Thank you, Lord, for showing me this. Okay. But the last part of the study, I think it is. Yes, because we're on the second page. I just, <laughs> I might have missed a page. No, I didn't. I put them all together. i just making sure I'm not getting lost in my own notes. I'm trying to learn to make notes where I speak to you more as a person than just being like a robot reading notes. I'm trying to learn how to talk and everything. But the last part of this is what should we do with graven images? It's not enough for me to tell you you shouldn't have them. What do you do with them? Do you do a garage sale? Oh, let's see if I can get some money for them. 
Uh, do you give them away? Well, I don't really want them in my house, but you know, this person, if you want it, here, you can have it. What does the Bible say we're supposed to do with graven images? Second Chronicles 34, chapter 34, verse 7, if you want to go there. Uh, the, the, God has a special way, and a specific way, that we're supposed to get rid of um, uh, image, uh, graven images. And when he had broken down the altar and groves, destroyed, basically, and had beaten the graven image into powder, get a hold of that. Your attitude sometimes, if you find out you do have like a statue, some people like, they might have had a statue of Jesus on a cross or something like that. You break that to pieces. and You ground it to powder if you can. And cut down all the idols throughout all the land of Israel. Right there, I always try to relate that to like paintings, you know. You cut them down, but you don't have to like, you know, cut the wall. But you know what I'm saying? You take them down, okay. Uh, he returned, let's see. He cut down the idols throughout all the land of Israel. He returned to Jerusalem. So you cut them down, and you break them, and you smash them. What else is a way to take care of them? Deuteronomy 7, 5. If you want to go there. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars, once again, destroy it, and break down their images, and cut down their groves, and burn their ima graven images with fire. Uh, you got paintings, you've got uh, uh, my magazines, I had false Bible, I had Bibles that were good. They are King James Bible, but they had, uh, they had graven images in them. Uh, you destroy them, you burn them, you get rid of them. Isaiah 21, 9, and behold, here come, Isaiah 21, 9, I'll give you a second. I've been asked by a brother to calm down, give us a second every time you tell us to turn somewhere, to give us a second to pause it. And then, and then unpause it. I need to do that, and I'm working on it. Isaiah 21, 9. And behold, here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and all the graven images of her God he hath broken unto the ground. Okay, I want to do that one, because what God's going to do to Babylon, destroy it, and all the pagan images and, you know, graven images are going to be destroyed. So that's how God deals with it. He also wants us to deal with it that way. You destroy it. You destroy it, you throw it out. Oh, it's a nice painting. Oh, I paid I paid a thousand bucks for this painting. It doesn't matter. You destroy it and you throw it out. Of course, I'm one of those people, I live simple. I think it's I think it's ridiculous to pay a thousand dollars for a painting. All the paint most of the paint I have to say ninety percent of the paintings in my house, my grandma did. I was blessed by the Lord to get nice, beautiful paintings for free. Micah 1 7. The last verse we're going to go to, Micah 1 7. It's a beautiful day today. And all the graven images thereof shall be beaten to pieces, and all the hires thereof shall be burned with the fire, and all the idols thereof will I lay desolate, for she gathereth it of the hire of an harlot, and they shall return to the hire of a harlot. Now, once again we see beaten, but now I'm not saying the hires thereof shall be burned with fire. I'm not saying we need to kill those who create them. But I, read, I did this one in the sense that we should distance ourselves. Uh, we tell somebody, hey, you know what? You're not supposed to be doing this. And they say, well, I'm going to keep making statues. I'm going to keep doing paintings. I'm going to keep, you know, making King James Bibles with... Uh, picture Bibles with the image of Jesus Christ, or magazines, comic books, uh, chick uh, tracks, you know. Um, we need to distance ourselves from them. They've been told it's between them and God, and we need to distance ourselves from them. Okay? And we need to pray for them. If there's someone we love, and I do care about uh, David Daniels, and I believe he's saved, um, but he's, we, we need to pray for him. It's not enough just to say, okay, I need to back off. Prayer. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Pray, pray, pray for the brethren. Uh, pray for people. Uh, prayer is so, so important in these last days. So, with this study, I hope it has pricked your heart. I hope the first thing you do when you get done with this study is walk the house and say, hey, do I have any graven images in my home of the Godhead? Whether they be gospel tracts, um, 
comic books, Bibles, paintings, little statues. Regardless, you have a little dove that says Holy Spirit on it. There's nothing. I have Sister in Christ hit me. Um, there's nothing wrong with having a statue of a bird. There's nothing wrong with having a statue of an elephant. It's when that statue is supposed to represent a false god, an animal that represents a false god. Okay. There's nothing wrong with having a stuffed animal for your for your uh, daughter to hold. You know, the stuffed teddy bear. You know, it's when it becomes where you know it's related to a false religion. When you've got that cat sitting there with the arm open, I think it's like Chinese. Uh, or you've got those dogs that look weird because they're the ones that are supposed to guard the house. You know, um, you've got an elephant like I had on that ashtray. You had the Buddha lady with a crossed hand, the pointed hat, and then you had these elephants on there. You know that has to do with a false god. Get rid of it. Get it out of your home. But there's nothing wrong with just having a statue of an animal. Okay. Uh, I love Victoria. My grandparents, uh, my grandma gave me a statue of a schnauzer and I put it in the little garden area that I have as you first walk in. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Um, it's not made purposely to be a false god. Okay. And that, because I don't want people going too crazy uh, to make you think you got to throw almost everything out that's a statue. You know. Um, it's just mainly for you as a Bible-believing Christian, make sure you have no graven images of Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and God the Father. And definitely not all three is one, like the, God, uh, the Trinity. You know, for us, the Godhead, make sure you're not having any symbols or any figurine or anything that represents the Godhead. Get it out of your life. You want God's peace, God's joy, you want His, his love, His grace, and His protection on your home. And you want your heart to be right with the Lord. So, uh, I'm practicing this, uh, get, ending everything with uh, uh, peace and grace. May peace and grace from the Lord, from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And my love be with you in Jesus Christ. I'll see you guys in the next video.